Hello my soccer universe to the last review video of last weekend and yeah we have three leagues here so I don't want to waste too much time. Quick what are the headlines? Hazard scores finally for Real Madrid. Barcelona is still a kind of in a result crisis. PSG flying atop the league and there's a revolution in Portugal with Sporting suddenly being top on the table. So that's what we're going to look at and we'll start in La Liga where I owe you the Monday night result. Levante and Celta playing out a 1-1. Then uh, the sensation of the season so far is Cadiz with getting another win, this time 2-0 at Eibar. Um, Real Madrid not playing all that great until Azar decides, okay, I have a free uh, a path to goal, takes a great shot and makes his first goal, his second only, uh, I, th I think, for Real Madrid ever. And yeah, that set Real Madrid off. Lucas then assists Benzema, it's 2 0 at the half. Feli Valverde makes it 3 0 after Benzema assist. Um, then uh, Vinicius Junior came on, and you know, there was this big. Um, talk of Benzema, don't play to him. He actually, in his one, one of his first uh, acts, he uh, tried to assist a Benzema goal, which did not happen. Then Uesca um, pulls one back, but uh, at the end Benzema gets his second. And Real Madrid gets a rather convincing 4-1 win. Um, Bilbao gets a surprising win over Sevilla because Sevilla for the most time was pushing and bossing this game around uh, getting an early goal through Eneziri and looked by far the better and more mature side there. However, it kind of all changed then when Munain came on. And suddenly uh, something flipped in Bilbao and Munoin gets actually the equalizer and then uh, in the 86 Bilbao even gets the winner. The weird thing is how did Sevilla suddenly lose it? They look good and now they look in crisis as well. Uh, having, I think it was on a third loss in a row in La Liga, having this great winning run before um, seems really, really, really odd. Atletico Madrid with a quite convincing performance, uh, especially Joao Felic, who first converts a penalty in the fourth for the third, then uh, misses one, and both times the goalkeeper had quite the antics uh, to play on him there. Uh, second one, he clearly, the goal, you can see the goalkeeper, you're putting it there, you're putting it there. And Felic goes again, lower, lower left, and hits the post. And then I think, uh, well, 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 was it Vitolo who misses the, um, uh, the rebound? That was actually, I, I thought, harder to miss in, in, in a way. But Joao Felic gets the second one and he is becoming the linchpin for Atletico Madrid. And Atletico Madrid really looking, uh, getting in, in a groove and they were even playing without, without Luis Suarez. Budimir, former last player for one or two games, <laughs> uh, pulls one back for also Osasuna, but then a really nice trippier uh, cross allows um, Torreira, who also just came on, to make it 3-1 for Atleti in a very good performance with very ugly jerseys. I have to say, I don't like those neon jer jerseys. Speaking of weird jerseys, I saw most of Alaves against Barcelona and while I was okay with Barcelona playing in pink at Juventus because of the black socks, the turquoise socks. That just ruins the whole uniform to me. Uh, I, I, I was actually thinking, shall, shall I wear the orange jersey? But no, Barca did not deserve it. Although, they over, especially the second half, played well and created many chances. But the way they went down already in the first half, I mean, a back pass from Piquet to its Neto, who then gets the ball between his feet and Rioja just runs up. And the funny thing is that the, there was an Alaves player being injured and um, a coach wanted actually the ball out. Nope, <laughs> they score. Yay, Al Alaves. Um, but Barcelona really turned turned on, but only could find an equalizer through Griezmann, uh, the goalkeeper for Alaves uh, pulled out many great saves, especially on Messi. Probably Barcelona should, should, should have gotten the win, but you know, again, they do not get a win and it has been a long time. I think this is not the fourth time in, in a row that they didn't win and you worry about it. Yes, they had a good performance. Maybe the Champions League and so on, maybe they don't need it yet, but uh, you know, carefully we need to assess that Barcelona may slide slowly into a sort of crisis, especially if Real Madrid keeps winning. Have to see. Uh, Betis beats Elche 3-1. Uh, Celta Vigo 
loses at home to Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad really uh, being the informed team at the moment. I think a fourth win in a row. Um, Silva, David Silva gets, I think, his first goal, uh, you know, for uh, Real Sociedad. Oyar Sabal scores one with his thigh after uh, putting it on, on onto the post. It's 2 0. And then two very, the, the two goals that uh, came more for Real Sociedad were actually quite similar with Porto coming over the right side, assisting William Jose, who can put it in the empty net. However, the second one was more of a proper attack. The first one of those, the 3 0, uh, that ball was built by uh, Vigo who only can pull uh, one back through an Aspas penalty, also had a uh, player sent off. I really like Vigo, I really do, but I think they will have a hard time staying in the, in the league if they don't continue from there. They would actually have really good players, but for some reason they cannot get, 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 get together. Uh, is a coaching change in order? Maybe. We have to see. Iago Aspas said, no, please don't. Uh, Granada Levante ended in 1 1, and then Valencia Getafe was probably the crazy game of the, um, of the round. With uh, Musa, I think 17 year old, with a great run, gives Valencia the lead. Then the game, it, it's, it's a very testy game. You know, Correa gets for uh, Valencia, gets sent, sent, sent off in the 56th. Um, and Getafe comes more and more into the game, trying to press forward for the equalizer. But that allows, especially late on, Valencia to uh, launch one counter-attack after another, but cannot find the goal. And so it is Getafe who actually gets uh, the equalizer through Cucho Hernandez in the 80, 87th, and Angel in the 94th even gets the supposed winner. <laughs> and uh, at that time also that uh, Suarez gets sent, um, Nah, that, uh, that, 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 that was later. Uh, but you know, you think, yeah, Valencia is not completely down. Uh -uh, everything, but uh, they run down the other side of the field and get a penalty. Yes, was a bit, maybe a little bit lucky, but Soler converts after huge discussions, everything. I mean, it took, it was five minutes stoppage time, became 11 minutes. Uh, in, uh, in, in between, Suarez gets sent off 2-2, two -two. great. Dramatic game. Villarreal beats uh, Valladolid 2-0 uh, late on. Which means on the table, I mean, it says now Real Sociedad is ahead of Real Madrid, but Real Madrid has a game less, so always have that in mind with that. Uh, so I think the real leader, in a way, is Real Madrid. And Atletico has two games less, and if they get those points, they are, they are even uh, further ahead. So uh, the two Madrid teams looking really, really good. And as you can see for the championship prediction, Atleti is now ahead of Barcelona already. However, Barcelona is still more likely to make it in the Champions League, um, which I can, I could uh, um, explain to you statistically, but let's not go there. At, at, at the way. It has to do with their variation of distribution. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. Real Madrid now really favored with almost 50% and then the rest is a, kind of split between Atletico and Barcelona, although Sevilla and Real Sociedad are given small chances, but Sevilla is really, really draw, dropping out. At the moment, the four Champions League spots go to the top three and Real Sociedad, because Sevilla is down 16th. I mean, that is remarkable. Uh, Barcelona also, with two game, games in hand, probably looks lower than they should be. Similar situation uh, as in England. Uh, Cadiz makes it up into fifth spot. They're the sensation of the league uh, at the moment. And if we look now for um, relegation, I really wanted to support Valladolid, but they don't look all, all the good. Elche, although in the mid-table, also but they have games games in hand. Uh, still, the model says they are going low. And then Uesca, you know, the promoted teams. Uh, Celta Vigo still only 8%, but that is because they have, because of the players, a pretty good rating. But they don't seem to be a good team. And also, if you look at the average goal scored in Spain, rather, rather low. little bit uh, in the next round, we have the... Then big name match with Valencia Real Madrid, although this season I don't think it's that great. Barca Betis, uh, always one to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm also looking for Atletico Cadiz, that could be interesting. And Getafe Villarreal, kind of like they're a little bit outside there. In League A, the Friday evening game was postponed because of loss being struck by COVID. So, this is their second game in, 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 in a week, and I think that. Uh, they may have pulled uh, Ren against Brest, but, uh, but I'm not so certain about that. Ren actually was 1-0 down uh, against Brest, but then can turn it around um, 
uh, lay down so the 57 honora uh, has gives press the lead which was against the run of play but uh, Ren was totally uh, dominating the, the silver and Aguirre then uh, can turn it around for Brest. I actually saw a not PSG PSG also playing in their um, not in their nice churches which would have done a fine job now they have to play in the we, we call it Bordeaux red which makes even less sense um, that they were also playing at Bajakshi here. Uh, how do I characterize here? Yes, PSG was better, but not had two really, really big chances, especially the, I, I think in the 12th minute or so, they should have taken the lead where the striker just hits over the ball or the ball goes between his legs. No, he hits it with his right and then, then, then it goes on his left and out. And so, yeah, when under Herrera in the 7th after Mbappé assist uh, makes it 1-0, you knew where this is going, Mbappé gets a penalty. Um, and then a penalty is given also to uh, Nantes, that's bomb that, uh, is, uh, the bomber kind of invites uh, Navas to make a save in Sarabia late. Makes it a 3-0, but it was much harder work for PSG than it seemed, but I still decided, yeah, let's pull out PSG for this video. Uh, you see the other results. Uh, Montpellier gets a win at Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne keep uh, dropping. Nice against Angers, 3 0. Uh, Dijon Lorient, 0 0. Nîmes, uh, Nîmes against Metz, uh, somewhat surprising 1 0 for Metz. Reims in the Cathedral Derby gets a 2 1 over Strasbourg. Monaco destroys Bordeaux. And Lille Lyon, um, maybe Lille had a little bit better uh, in game, but. Bamba gets him a really nice, nice goal, but uh, the equals was through an own goal for Selig, who just, you know, the ball is there, there's a cross that hits his head and it goes in. Um, Marcelo is then sent off for Lyon with a yellow-red, and Lyon can hold, hold on, Lille uh, cannot find the winner. Which means that in the standings now, PSG flying and now really separated themselves. We have Lille and Rennes. Up there, Nice is coming in there, Marseille has a game in hand, could uh, join the fray, but uh, it looks really all set for PSG at the moment. Lyon still having a strong uh, chance for the Champions League due to the good rating. Um, and on the bottom of the table, Dijon looks down, down and out, and, uh, but it's still very open. I think the French League is one of the most balanced ones. If you just look at how the um, uh, points spread here is, it looks rather, rather even. Uh, in the next round, uh, Lyon Saint Etienne is a big derby, but I think Lyon will win that one. PSG Rennes probably is the pick of the bunch uh, there, and we have to see if Lens will be able to play. Portugal. We had midweek game between Sporting and Gilles Vicente, uh, 3 1. And I think um, I also owe you that um, the win by Benfica before that, who beat Belenenges uh, 2 0. With that, actually, uh, quite quite a few things changed here. Uh, that Sporting suddenly was in second spot, moving up, and Benfica still ahead, but only by two points, and it all turned around. We had huge losses by the uh, big two. Passos, uh, the Ferreira, beat Porto 3-2, um, uh, which was already a pretty big result. It, should, it could have been 3 0 at the half. It was only 3 1. There was a goal did, uh, disallowed. Uh, a penalty for Porto late in the half kept Porto in the game, but Ferreira can again with a penalty take a 3 1 lead. It ends 3 2. Then Sporting Pete's Tondela, not very surprising, 4 0. But that Boavista, who lost 5 0 at home to Porto, beats Benfica 3 0. Yes, they had a VAR goal uh, disallowed. That was a huge surprise. And so we have suddenly Sporting top of the table, ahead of Benfica and then Prague and Porto. Lots of changes in Portugal. In the next round there, benfica Braga is the big uh, matchup, I have to say. Also Guimarães against Sporting, kind of an interesting one. Well, that was a run through three leagues. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you thought about all the games that I uh, talked talk about. If you want to add something, please drop a line below. Give me um, Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.